This man dies, go to hell, and he calls on the name of two people, Jesus and Muhammad. And when he does that, there's one person that comes to his aid and comes to his rescue. And it's going to completely surprise you. So take a listen of this with me and uh, let's watch this together. Because this is a great video. Check this. I was in the I was in between death and uh, the spiritual realm. So I was falling in this black abyss, falling so fast. It was so fast, and I could feel the wind, like the wind from falling. It was taking my breath away. I couldn't even like breathe. And right away, like right away, I like everything is enhanced a million times. Like you know everything instantly. You feel everything instantly. You hear everything instantly. Instantly, this black abyss wasn't just like black, like my black T-shirt. Imagine this black enhanced by a million. Oh, that's how black. It was so black in this tunnel or whatever. I don't think you're allowed to say black that many times, but continue on with the video. Where it was, it was just imagine just go somebody taking you in a in an airplane above a desert in, in the middle of the night and just pushing you off that airplane, and it's pitch black, and I was falling and falling and falling, and right away, right away my soul told me, right away it, your soul talks to you like you, it's it's I can't explain it like the way I explain it in words is is the closest I can get to the reality of it. But I was, it was, I was falling so fast. And usually when you have a dream that you're falling, you'll pop up. And that's what I was waiting for. I was like, well, well, come on, well. and then I knew right away when my soul told me you're going, you're dead. And right away I said, what we say in Islam is the Shahada and in Arabic, I'm going to say in Arabic and then I'll translate it for you. But so this is something that's congruent amongst everybody that has a near death experience. They talk about how you're just falling really, really, really fast. It's like you're 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 being pulled out of your body, and there's no stopping it, and you're just free falling. So it's just interesting to hear and interesting to see what happens after death. And we know that death is not the end. You just don't go nowhere. Your brain doesn't just shut off. Yes, we have a body, but once our body dies or our body decays, you're gonna end up going in one of two places: heaven or hell. And it's not up to God. It's not up to the devil. It's not about uh, your good works or what you've done here on this earth. It's about if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And you have not done so. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do so at the very end of this video. Because eternity is a real place. And you're going to spend all of eternity in either heaven or hell. God is rooting for you. And the devil is also rooting for you. But you cast the deciding vote. When I screamed this. The scream was so loud that in life I will I will blow the roof off my house. That's how I will bust out every windows because your voice is enhanced a million times. Everything is enhanced. Everything. You can feel every single hair, every single cell. You know everything. You hear everything like enhanced. Everything is so crisp and piercing. <sighs> So I screamed, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and I kept on screaming that, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I kept on screaming it faster, more and more and more, because I was so desperate. I, I had to get out of the situation. And right away, my soul told me, it's not true. You're going to hell for eternity. It's not true. So I'm like, what do you mean it's not true? What do you mean? What's not true? What's not true? And while I'm doing, while, while I'm, I'm not saying this in voice. And this is going through my mind. Every a million things are going through my mind. My whole life and everything's going through my mind. What do you mean? What's what's going on here? You know? Am I missing anything? What am I missing? Am I missing to say anything? What am I missing here? And I'm still screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allah, Allah, please, ya Allahu Akbar. Which means God's the greatest. And uh the Shahada when Shahadun La ilaha Allah, Shahadun Muhammad Rasulullah means I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So I screamed that I screamed. And you have trouble in remembering John 3.16. Let's go. Allahu Akbar about 10 times, screaming, screaming, nothing happened. My soul told me that you're going out for eternity. So right right when I felt the hopelessness, that like, man, the hopeless, this, this is the word that, I, that will never, the most important word in my life is hope. Because when you feel the hopelessness in the afterlife, compared to a hopelessness that you feel on earth is I don't even let nothing get to me anymore. Nothing worries me no more. The, the hopelessness feeling is worse than being in hell itself. 
because knowing that God, because the only last hope you have is God. And once you know that he is separated from you and he does not hear you because he didn't hear me. And that hopeless feeling, I don't wish I'm the worst person in the world. That's how bad this, this is, this is the, the hopelessness is just unbearable. Nobody can, nobody can ever, ever, ever be able to handle, handle the, the, the feeling, the feeling of detachment from God, the feeling that God does not hear you and he will never, ever hear you or help you once you're done. So I, there's, there's this white light flagging around me so fast. It's so fast. And right away, I knew it was a, my guardian angel. And this guardian angel's voice is the most scariest and the most beautiful voice in one. That's the only way I can ever explain it in reality. It's, it, and it, it never leaves me. It's always every single day I hear this voice, this angel's voice. I'm going to send the link right down in the comments. You could actually watch the entire, not documentary, but the entire interview with this guy. Because what he says, it's mind-boggling. I think it's about an hour and a half, but I just compiled it to like the seven minutes of the juiciest part of him actually dying. But I'll put the link down in the description so you can uh, watch the full thing for yourself. <laughs> and, it, and it was screaming from the right ear to the left ear, screaming, screaming, screaming at me back and forth. Amir, Amir, repeating itself. Please, please, you have to listen to me. He can still hear you. You have to tell Jesus to come into your heart and save you. You have to do it now before your soul leaves your body. Do it before your soul leaves your body. Hurry, he can still hear you. He's the only one that can save you. And and I'm and I'm like, what do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean, Jesus? What, what about Allah? What about what about Allah? What do you mean, Jesus? That that's the last the like. I would never in a billion years ever think that Jesus would be the one to rescue me, and I was still denying it. Even at that moment, I was like in denial. I was like, "There's no way. How how can this be? What about Allah? How can this be? How can this be?" And it's telling. What the Bible says, where it says, "Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord." So you either recognize Him as your Lord now. Or you're going to recognize him as your Lord when it's far too late. So make that decision to recognize him as Lord while you still have time to do so. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And, and then I, I'm looking down and I see another like a, a, another, like a, a, a portal. Like you could, it's like another portal. And I knew like that was the end of it right there. Right before I screamed, I said, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And a big flash and a thunder. That's how the, but this thunder was. It would it would it would shake the whole earth. That's how this thunder was, Boom! like that. And my body, my body came, my soul came right back into my body with so much force that I was sore for about three three or four days. I was sore, and my body came out of my. I jumped out of my bed like this, pouring sweat. My wife was next to me, sleeping. She woke up, and and I'm like, baby, not believe what happened to me. I died, I died. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. She's like, babe, babe, you had a nightmare. Just go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Cause she was, it was late. Where you know, I'm just crying. Nah, man. Nah, that wasn't just a nightmare. That was that was <laughs> that was an encounter with God. Crying my eyes out, and I said to myself, I'm gonna read the Quran again. I'm going to read the Quran again. I have to. Because in Islam, we believe that sometimes the devil plays tricks on us and he can come looking like somebody or or or, uh, or put stuff in your mind and stuff like that. But then, but then right away, right when I think like that, God answers me and says, no, because I screamed Allah, I screamed the Shahada and I screamed Allah's name so many times. And I screamed Jesus' name one time. And he gave me back my life. Mm. Allah didn't hear me. Allah didn't hear me. I screamed. At, I just so this is the interview. I know she just popped out of nowhere. But uh, good lady. So I'll put the link down in the description where you can watch entire, the entire interview. Only one I looked to. That's the only one I had hope for. That's the only one I knew that would save me. And he didn't save me. He didn't even hear me. He didn't even hear me, but Jesus heard me, and I didn't even believe in Jesus like that. I just thought he's a prophet in Islam. He's a prophet to us. He's a very important prophet, you know, but nothing more, nothing less. He was a miracle. We believe, you know, we believe that he did miracles. We believe that he was born from a uh, uh, virgin. We believe that he was sinless. The only thing we didn't believe is that he wasn't crucified. That's why I got this T-shirt. There's so much power in this name. Right. 
so much power. I screamed his name out one time and he gave me my life back. He gave me love that I never knew what love was until I have his love. I, I mean, I thought I knew what love was, but you, know, you would never know what love was until you have the love of Jesus in you. It's un, it's uncontainable. You can never explain it into words. Uh, it, the, it's so amazing. And you want to do everything you can to glorify him. Come on. That's a powerful testimony and, and a powerful uh, experience. And this is a thing. <laughs> People think we, we, we have a, or we serve a joke or that Christianity is a religion amongst every single other religion. It's not. It, that, that's far from the truth. You know, in the Old Testament, we had Elijah go up to Mount Carmel and he challenged the prophets of Baal. There was a thousand of the false prophets. And he said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a sacrifice. We're, we're going to put a bull on an altar. The God that answers by fire is the true and living God that we all are going to worship. So all the prophets of Baal went. They did their rituals. They danced their dance. They gave their sacrifices. They cut themselves. Did everything they did to provoke their God. But he didn't answer. And then Elijah came. And you can read it yourself. It's uh, 1 Kings, I believe, chapter 19. Elijah came, prayed a prayer that lasted, if you read it slow, it's like 15 seconds. And then immediately, the Bible says that fire came from heaven and consumed the entire sacrifice. My friend, there is only one God that answers and hears his children. And that's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God Jesus Christ. And you can get to know him as well. And I'm telling you, if you don't know, I'm not talking about joining a religion. I'm not talking to you about religious fanaticism. I'm talking to you having a personal relationship, just like that man, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can do so as well. And I'm going to give you this open invitation because it's not by the amount of works that you do. It's not by how much money you have or how much money you give. It's not by doing good deeds. The Bible says that you can only be saved and get into a relationship with God one way. Romans chapter 10, by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, only then you can be saved. So if you've never prayed that prayer, I want to pray with you and for you from this very moment. And just say this, dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today and I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, and make me new. I believe in my heart that you died. And on the third day you rose. I renounce to the world. I renounce to the devil. Heaven is my home. And from today, I am your child. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I want you to email me. Email me at contact at epicgospel.ca because we want to send you some free stuff. It's not spam. we got a couple devotionals that's going to help you go through the Bible and also has a prayer for every single day so you can get started in your relationship with God and you can clearly hear His voice. We also have some PDFs that we're going to get you absolutely for free. And these PDFs contain things about your identity in Christ, what does it mean to get saved, and some things that's going to help you on the next steps and in your journey with Jesus Christ. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.